Hey tennis fans, I'm Grace Carter. Welcome to your Tennis Now News Update. America watched the end of an era last week. After 33 years, 6,028 broadcasts and 16 Emmy Awards, David Letterman took his final bow as Late Show host, concluding the longest run as a network TV talk show host in American television history. Dave, if you didn't know, is a tennis fan and sometime player who talked to a lot of the game's top stars on The Late Show. So in tribute to the man who made the top 10 list part of our pop culture, we're counting down David Letterman's top 10 tennis moments. Fittingly, we start our countdown with a Letterman countdown delivered by Johnny Mack back in 2004 before the launch of his own talk show. He was the number one player in the world four times. My God, very impressive. Okay, top 10 reasons I'll make a good talk show host. Here we go, number 10. You never know when I'll go nuts and beat a guest with a tennis racket. <laughs> There's nothing more entertaining than watching me bully people until they cry. <laughs> At number nine, when Dave suggests rivalries are good for his game, Rafa Nadal isn't buying it. Really? Mm -hmm. So it is necessary to have that guy to, to work against and work with, in a sense. Well, sometimes in the, it's better if he's not there, because... <laughs> <laughs> Rafa and Dave hit a few balls into the crowd afterward. Thank you very much. I'll just take a couple. <laughs> Look out, look out. Andy Roddick visited Letterman after his gut-wrenching loss to Roger Federer back in the 2009 Wimbledon final. Dave asked if he'd finally gained a mental edge on Fed, and Andy's sarcastic retort makes our number eight moment. Hole here. Or does, are you now in his head more than you ever were? Oh yeah, if, if, there's, if there's one thing people know is that uh, I'm in Roger Federer's head, definitely. Um. <laughs> our number seven moment, Andre Agassi reveals why he wore a hair weave on court before a surprise reunion with an old friend. Eddie, take this to the birthday uh, girl. Oh. I just wanna, oh. Say goodbye to in an earlier appearance, Andre sets Letterman up for an easy winner, explaining how he copes with a tough loss. You know, when you, you just, you dream about it. You can't get the loss off it. You yeah. just, it just absolutely stays on your mind. I think that's what allows you to really be focused and to do your thing even better the next time. Yeah, all right. Good you know, it's kind of like when you have a bad show. <laughs> well, you know, it hasn't happened yet, so. <laughs> World number one, Novak Djokovic delivers our number six moment. Nole dropped by the show before the 2014 U.S. Open and told the story of how one lucky fall led to his birth. Turns out Nole's parents hooked up on a ski slope. Uh, he was a skiing instructor. She, she fell down. He seized his opportunity and he said, <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said, hi, can I teach you how to ski? And <laughs> yeah. she said, yeah, uh, yeah, sure, why not? And then yeah. here I am. Yeah, you know, here so. you are, yeah. Shortly after her marriage to Andy Mill, Chris Everett appeared on the show sharing a wedding party photo featuring her Hall of Fame friends and superhero Wonder Woman prompting this exchange. Hey, wait a minute, you oh, have one more, and then there's Linda Carter there. You just can't Linda Carter one from uh, TV's Wonder yeah. Woman. Right. <laughs> oh, very good. Well, why was Wonder Woman at the wedding? <laughs> was, was she part of security or yeah. what? <laughs> John Isner outdueled Nicholas Mahout, winning the longest match in tennis history of Wimbledon, then revealed exactly what he was thinking during that 11-hour epic. Our number four moment is the marathon man's number four thought that even cracks John up. Why couldn't I have played Fetter? <laughs> Would have been over in 15 minutes. That's right. <laughs> now, no, come on. After winning the 2014 U.S. Open title, Serena Williams visited the show, giving the host a chance to touch greatness, and Serena got a case of the giggles. Uh, maybe, but I, I probably, I just wanna. <laughs> you wanna touch me? <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. <laughs> Here, you want to touch me? Our number two moment comes when Dave and Serena take tennis to the street for a quick rally and then get smashed on Broadway.
we've reached our number one David Letterman tennis moment. We're gonna make it a double shot. Manhattan meets Moscow and finds common ground in a classic drink. Watch Dave's reaction as Marat Safin reveals how he celebrated his 2000 US Open Championship upset of Pete Sampras. Are you, are you drunk now? Did you, <laughs> you, do you drink? It's still a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Well, what were you drinking? Vodka. Vodka? What do you think? Vodka! Marat also detailed his brand of the breakfast of champions. <clears throat> you, you, don't, you don't drink regularly, do you? No, every day. Uh, <laughs> breakfast. Uh, breakfast. Perfect. Safin, who led the ATP in smashing rackets, makes Letterman laugh talking about the price he pays for racket destruction. You, you've broken equipment in the past, is that right? You, you've actually broken rackets? Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I used I used to do this. Yeah, and, and what is that? Is that does that help you as a player? Does that help focus you, or does that actually dissipate your energy and concentration? Uh, just uh, the problem is that you have to pay after you break the racket. Uh -huh. You have to pay a fine. Oh, yeah, they fine you for that? Okay. No, no, they say thank you. You are doing well. <laughs> That's all for today's Top 10 Tennis Countdown. Tell us what your favorite Tennis Dave moment was in the comments section below. We'll see you next time here on Tennis Now.